Welcome back to the Parasitology Lecture Series. The point of this lecture is to discuss antimalarial treatment. Let's begin. So we have here quite a list of antimalarial drugs. We have amodiaquin, artemeter, lumifantrin, artesanate, atovacone, proguanil, usually a combination drug, chloroquine, clindamycin, another combo drug, dihydroartemisinin, piperaquine, doxycycline, mefloquine, primaquine, quinine, and sulfadoxine, perimethamine. All of these are different antimalarial drugs, but some of them can be classified into some classification, and we'll try to discuss that. Now, using this slide, please take note that each drug is paired with its specific mechanism of action and the blood stages it primarily affects. Again, as a review, this symbol here is for heme accumulation. Your R would refer to the ring stage. Your T would refer to your mature trophozoid stage. While your G here would be your gametocyte stage. Capitalized letters would represent primary modes of action. In this case, the capital R refers to the action of artesanate on the ring stage form. Capital S would refer to its primary action also on the schizont form, while the small letter G would refer to its secondary effect on gametocytes. So let's go to each drug one by one. Amodiaquin is used primarily for treatment of uncomplicated or severe malaria, usually in combination with artesanate. The, me the mechanism of action is interference with the heme detoxification process. It is effective against large ring stages, trophozoites, and a little bit action on the gametocytes primarily of Plasmodium vivax, ovale, and malariae. Side effects would include GI disturbances, hepatotoxicity, granulocytosis, and is contraindicated in hypersensitivity reactions, history of hepatic impairment, and those with neutropenia or retinopathy. Due to the side effects, this is rarely used for prophylaxis. Artemeter is also used to treat uncomplicated malaria, and this is usually paired up with lumefantrin. Intramuscularly, it can also be used to treat severe malaria. The mechanism of action of artemeter is its conversion into dihydroartemisinin, or DHA, and this is the one which binds to heme, which eventually leads to the release of free radicals. It is effective against the ring stage, the early schizont stage, and it has some gametocidal effects. It is generally well tolerated by most individuals and only contraindicated in hypersensitivity reactions. It is not used for prophylaxis, and currently, it is proven to cause a rapid clearance of parasites. Together with artemeter is this drug, lumefantrin. It is also converted to its active metabolite. It also accumulates in the parasite food vacuole, and it interferes with heme detoxification. Well, the main function of artemeter is the rapid clearance of parasites. The effect of lumefantrin is the sustained clearance of parasites. Hence, you use artemeter lumifantrin combination drugs as a one-two knockout punch. Artesanate is used in the treatment of uncomplicated malaria in its oral form, usually in combination with amodiaquine, mefloquine, or your sulfadoxine perimethamine. It can also be used in the treatment of severe malaria if given intravenously intramuscularly, or even rectally. Similar to your other artemisinin family of drugs, it is converted into dihydroartemisinin as well, which is responsible for its heme detoxification canceling effect. It is effective against the ring stage, the early schizont stage, and some activity in the gametocyte stage. It is also well tolerated and with very limited contraindications. However, caution should be exercised in treating pregnant patients in the first trimester. Atovacone proguanil is primarily used as a prophylactic drug. It can also be used in the treatment of uncomplicated malaria 
especially if they happen outside of endemic areas. The mechanism of action of atovacone inhibits the parasite enzyme transport and interferes with the electron transport chain. This leads to the collapse of mitochondrial membrane potential of the parasite. Progonil, on the other hand, inhibits folic acid synthesis by inhibiting the folic acid synthesis enzyme dihydrofolate reductase. Atovacone progonil is a very strong antimalarial and it affects all the stages in the life cycle of your plasmodium parasite. It is also well tolerated with a little bit of contraindications in renally impaired patients. The reason why atovacone progonil is not routinely used in the clinical setting is that while it is very strong against, against all of the life cycle stages of the parasite, you have high-grade resistance against the drug, usually through cytochrome B mutations of the parasite. So they're using atovacone progonil as a reserve drug. Chloroquine is a very old drug used to treat malaria. It is used in the treatment of non-falciparum uncomplicated malaria. And in some areas, it is also used as prophylaxis, but only against Plasmodium vivax infections. It is converted into its active metabolite, and it primarily interferes also with heme detoxification. It is effective against the large ring stages, the trophozoites, and some action on Plasmodium gametocytes. It is also well tolerated, and side effects would include pruritus. It is, however, contraindicated in patients with psoriasis, neurologic problems, retinal or GI disturbances, and as we've learned from the media recently, those with heart problems. The main issue with chloroquine at present is its rampant drug resistance worldwide, and this is primarily due to mutations in the food vacuole proteins PFCRT and PFMDR. Clindamycin is more well known as a normal antibiotic. In malarial cases, however, it can be used in the treatment of uncomplicated malaria, usually in treatment failures or severe malarial infections. This is usually in combination with artesanate and quinine. The mechanism of action of clindamycin is the inhibition of protein synthesis primarily the 50S ribosome. Its effectivity is primarily limited with the schizont stage, but some studies would say that it probably affects some of the blood stages as well. Its main side effect is pseudomembranous colitis. Therefore, it is contraindicated or should be used with caution in patients with GI disturbances. Again, it is primarily used against falciparum infections who are classified as treatment failures. Failure. Dihydroartemisinin piperaquine combination drug is used in the treatment of uncomplicated or even severe malaria as well. The dihydroartemisinin drug here in this combination drug is the actual active metabolite of the other artemisinin drugs that we've mentioned earlier. And as we've mentioned earlier, the DHA here is the one responsible for the free radical accumulation, which is toxic to the parasite. Piperaquin, on the other hand, is converted to its active form and accumulates in the food vacuole, similar to your amodiaquin and lumefantrin, which inhibits heme detoxification. Dihydroartemisin in piperaquin is effective against the ring stage, the early skies on stage, and again, some activity on gametocytes. It is also generally well tolerated, and it should be used with caution in patients with QT prolongations. The hydroartemisin in piperaquine is usually reserved against chloroquine-resistant infections. Doxycycline is another well-known antibacterial, but for malaria, it is primarily used for prophylaxis. It can also be used in the treatment of uncomplicated falciparum malaria or treatment of even severe malaria in combination with other antimalarial drugs. 
Its mechanism of action is disruption of the parasite apicoplast, which eventually inhibits protein synthesis. Its main effect is limited to blood schizonts. Side effects would include nonspecific GI symptoms. It is contraindicated in pregnant women, in very young children, usually children less than 8 years old, and it should be used with caution in patients with lupus and GI inflammatory diseases. Mefloquine is another drug usually used for prophylaxis. It is converted to its active metabolite and also interferes with heme detoxification. Its main action is against the larger ring stages as well as the early trophozoite stage. Compared with the other antimalarial drugs, mefloquine produces relatively more side effects, primarily side effects concerning the central nervous system and GI symptoms. It is contraindicated in patients with a history of cerebral malaria as well as patients with neuropsychiatric disorders. Caution should be administered if using mefloquine in patients with hepatic impairment. The main role of primoquine is the treatment of vivax or ovale malaria. This is usually in combination with artemisinin in combination therapies or chloroquine. Primoquine can also be used for prophylaxis against all species as a monotherapy and it is also used in the reduction of falciparum malaria transmission primarily because of its strong anti-gametocytic effect which prevents the parasite from getting transferred into another vector, which can propagate transmission. So if you cut down on the gametocyte stage, you prevent the parasite from being transferred into another mosquito, thus cutting down the transmission process. If you take a look at all the drugs here, it is the only one with a very strong anti-gametocytic effect. The mechanism of action of primaquine is the generation of hydrogen peroxide radicals which directly kills the parasite inside your infected red blood cells. As we mentioned earlier, it is strongly effective against gametocytes. It is also effective against hypnozoites, which leads to its primary role in the treatment of Plasmodium vivax and ovale infection. As far as side effects are concerned, it may produce GI symptoms on a dose-related manner. It is contraindicated in a lot of instances, including pregnancy and breastfeeding, infants less than 6 months old, patients with severe G6PD deficiency, and should be used with caution in patients with autoimmune diseases such as systemic lupus erythematosus and rheumatoid arthritis. It is also contraindicated in patients with severe NADH met hemoglobin reductase deficiency. The good thing about primaquine is that there is no resistance documented yet. So it remains to be effective against hypnozoids and gametocytes and even asexual blood stages, primarily of plasmodium vivax. Quinines, on the other hand, is also an important arsenal in the fight against malaria. It's primarily reserved in the treatment of severe malaria, usually in the intramuscular or intravenous pathways, and it is also used in the treatment of uncomplicated malaria in its oral form, usually in the first trimester of pregnancy, or as alternatives to your artemisinin drugs. Its mechanism of action is also interfering with the heme detoxification process. It is highly effective against the larger ring stage, the trophozoites, and also gametocytes, primarily of vivax, ovale, and malaria to a lesser degree. The main side effect of quinines is synchronism. Synchronism is a form of tinnitus with slight impairment of hearing, accompanied with nausea, dizziness, headaches, dysphoria, or sometimes disturbed vision. More severe manifestations would include vertigo, severe vomiting and abdominal pain, sometimes diarrhea, sometimes with marked auditory loss and visual symptoms, even sometimes loss of vision. Another important side effect of quinines is hyperinsulinemic hypoglycemia, which is particularly common in young children, pregnant women, and elder patients, hence the contraindication in these particular age groups. Quinine also causes the prolongation of QT intervals 
Although cardiotoxic effects are much less frequent than those of quinidine, hypotension and cardiac arrest may even occur if the drug is given too rapidly, such as in bolus doses intravenously. So quinines are very toxic, and care must be practiced in its administration. Lastly, sulfadoxine pyrimethamine combination drug is used in the intermittent preventive treatment of first and second trimester pregnant women. So this is the alternative drug used in the early stages of pregnancy. It can also be used in the treatment of uncomplicated malaria as a second-line drug. Its mechanism of action is inhibition of the folic acid synthesis pathway, similar to your cotrimoxazole. It is primarily effective against late trophozoite or schizont stages. It's generally well tolerated, and its main contraindication is megaloblastic anemia, usually seen in premature or infants less than two months old, and even in patients receiving cotrimoxazole. Before we leave this very toxic slide, here are some other important summary points. See you on my next video. If you learned something, feel free to share this video. And don't stop learning.